if you go back into the 1970s and 80s, you had emerging for the first time what we might crudely call the media and history movement. We're talking organisations like the International Association of Media and History, the Journal, Historical Journal, Film, Radio and Television, for example, um, which were essentially a group of academically trained historians. And what they wanted to do was to say to themselves, how can we use, uh, well, mainly film to start with, but later other media as well, as evidence for understanding human activity in the past. So the starting point they took is, we have methods and approaches for analyzing the significance of, of, of novels, of government documents, of illuminated manuscripts, of commercial records, of all these kind of paper-based records. Historians are comfortable dealing with that kind of stuff. But at that point, they weren't comfortable dealing with moving image media at all. Most of them didn't even try to do it at all, and the few that did jumped to some rather generalizing and narrow-minded conclusions. So going right back to the beginning of this movement, if you like, when in the 1970s uh, you had uh, academics, uh, uh, um, for example, Nicholas Prone in Britain or uh, um, David Bauble and Kristen Thompson in the United States, for example, and what they started to do was to look at chiefly the holdings of film archives and uh, 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 films that they could get hold of very rarely through other ways, of course. And I think the ability to uh, uh, home record broadcasts off the television, the advent of VHS, was a very important one in this because at the first time um, it um, uh, uh, you know, it enabled the study of this material offline, so to speak. You didn't have to go to a film archive to do it. Um, and so you started to get um, serious study of the, the circumstances of the production and reception of things like newsreels, feature films, um, and that sort of stuff. So they looked at the, the economic context in which these films were made, uh, the political influence that was brought to bear. The study of propaganda, for example, was one of the very first things that the media and history did. But some of this work came to some, made some rather misleading assumptions about how material came to be preserved, how material came to be lost, the science and technology of film production, the science and technology of film reception. Um, and I would argue that certainly some of the work that came out during the 1980s um, perhaps more in the area, well especially in the area of, of film theory, more than the film and history movement, um, led us down some rather unhelpful garden paths. Um, the um, only one, one thing that really brought it home to, to me, for example, is in the mid-90s when Robert Harris restored Hitchcock's Vertigo, there was an article in a kind of very academic film magazine about this. Um, I can't now remember who the writer was, but if I remember correctly, he was a pretty major figure in the film theory world. And he celebrated Hitchcock's personal vision on this world. It, see, sorry, he celebrated Hitchcock's personal vision in, in making a film um, and said that this would always be regarded as a cultural masterpiece, quote, whatever the quibbling about the mixing of the soundtrack or the grading of the print. So the idea that very specific technological processes went into creating the kind of synthetic thing that he was engaging with, not only did he not want to go there, but he was actually saying it is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. Um, and this was a big problem I had, as I say, more with film theory than film history, but to some extent with film history as well, right from the start. And I thought that my background in both, you know, having stuck films in a projector and taken projectors to bits and repaired them and put them back together again, and also having formally studied where these guys are coming from, that I could kind of try and apply the one on the other and, 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 and make a little bit of sense of what was happening from that perspective. As I said, an awful lot of people had the same idea and, 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 and um, in many ways I'm very glad about that.